Where do I begin to describe a franchise like Bionicle? <laughs> Bionicle is this big, beautiful train wreck of so many awesome ideas and really, really memorable characters and a really fantastic story wrapped up with some of the most convoluted, shitty storytelling and world building you'll ever see in a franchise. <laughs> Jeez. To give you the basic idea of what Bionicle was, and uh, this is unrehearsed, so forgive me if I stumble a little. Bionicle was a buildable action figure released by LEGO in the year 2001 and ran up until 2010. Bionicle, unlike traditional LEGO sets, did not use standard system bricks, instead used parts from LEGO's Technic branding, which consisted of beams, axles, ball joints, and plus rods and gears and whatnot. Throughout his 10-year run, there were more than 220 different figures, another 100 added if you want to include combiner models, about 600, maybe more collectibles, which consisted of masks, gear, weapons, um, even slugs, believe it or not. <laughs> Throughout his 10-year run, Bionicle also consisted of 29 novels, 51 comics, 4 movies, about 10 graphic novels, hats, shoes, pants, t-shirts, buildable wristwatches, buildable alarm clocks, Halloween costumes, play weapons, toothbrushes, a bedsheet set, a birthday party set, cake toppers, video games, board games, Happy Meal toys, trading cards, a kitchen sponge, <laughs> an amusement park ride. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? You killed me with the kitchen sponge. It's real. I really, if you have a Bionicle kitchen sponge, please fucking send it to me. Tattoos, stickers, <laughs> stationary sets, buildable pens. Uh, I have one of the pens and three of the toothbrushes. There's a picture of them right there on screen. <laughs> wow. I also have the bed sheets. Oh my God. <laughs> There's probably towels in there too. Probably. I wouldn't be surprised. And it is amazing. <laughs> my God. So, Bionicle is quite a big beast to tackle. You're in luck, though. This game here is generally considered to be the starting point of the series. Mm -hmm. um, it is also generally considered to be, hands down, the single best piece of media for the whole franchise. Uh, don't let this set your expectations. The rest of it's nowhere near this good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's definitely the definition of the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Yes. <laughs> but this game... You do not need to be a Bionicle fan to appreciate this game. This is legitimately one of the best video games I've ever played. Mm -hmm. um, Katie can vouch for it. She oh, played yeah. it for the first time without knowing anything about the franchise about three months ago, and yeah. this game is fantastic. It was awesome. I was hooked the whole time. This game has one of the greatest senses of atmosphere I've ever seen in a game. Some of the best writing I've ever seen. Some excellent cinematography. Mm -hmm. Really, for a web browser flash game on the website designed to sell you toys, this game is way better than it has any right to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that whole uh, dump of all the media and everything? That was just G1. There was apparently a whole G2 that came out. God. <laughs> and I don't know shit about G2. Apparently there was a Netflix show. I never wow. saw that. Uh, there, the bad guy was called the Lord of Skull Spiders. I actually just bought him like a week ago. <laughs> He's pretty cool. Yeah, it's such a stupid name. It's actually kind of a fun set. God, if G2's anything like G1, man. I that's don't a know, rich franchise. <laughs> I don't know anything about G2. All I know is it bombed in sales. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> G1 was huge, though. During its, like, highlight, I think it was something like... 48% of, like, American boys own the toys. Wow, yeah. Like, every, like, even if you didn't own them, everybody knew what Bionicle was. Oh, like, definitely. I knew what Bionicle definitely. was. It's, I saw it in the stores at Walmart. It's kind of weird how it faded into so much obscurity after G1 ended, mm -hmm. or how big it was as highlight. Maybe one day. Maybe one day Michael Bay will make some movies on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> It'd probably be awful. Probably be worse than the ones we got. Oh, God. Anyway, we should probably introduce what this game is. Yeah. So this game was originally referred to as the Manui Adventure Game, although it's commonly referred to as the Manui Online Game, because it was a web browser game created by Templar Studios and put on the official LEGO Bionicle website in 2001. Mm -hmm. um, oddly enough, this game was originally intended to be not canon, as in it wasn't going to follow the story, although it's since been adapted to be part of the canon, because it's kind of better than the story we got the first year anyway. <laughs> um, so that's kind of cool, a little bit of trivia yeah. for you. This is a point-and-click flash game that puts you... On the tropical island of Manu, you play as a character who wakes up here on the beach without any memories of who they are, what this world is, and it's just up to you to explore and figure out the mystery of what's going on. Cool. Like I said before, this game is fantastic. I it's been a decade since I played it, honestly. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, you saw me play it, but like you weren't the one playing it. No, it's been a while. It's a different experience. So I'm just gonna sit back. I don't want to spoil anything. I think yeah. it's best for you guys to just sit here and enjoy this game with us. So without further ado, let's begin. See, there's like this cool little uh, canister on the this this whole like set of a canister there is just like the most iconic opening ever. I know. It's like what is and, like, it? Like the footsteps going there. We're actually going there in a little bit. Uh, yeah. right now I want to show you there's like this little thing behind us. Ooh. I love just the uh, all the imagery they use for this franchise. Yeah. Um pretend she's not there yet. I'll explain why in a little bit. Just for now <laughs> you're going to ignore her. Yeah, uh, sorry, Maku. We're going up here <laughs> to the stairs. 
I love that. I love the art style. It's so yes. pretty. The uh, aesthetic direction, as well as the naming scheme, a lot of the language was inspired by the real life Maori culture, which uh-huh. they created. They uh, lived on Easter Island, which they knew in their own language as Rapa Nui. So you see where the name Matanui came from. Yeah, yeah. So uh, why don't we get a little backstory, shall we? Yeah. It's amazing what they could do without even using text there. Yeah. When I first played this, I was like, I have no idea what's going on, but I'm so intrigued. You don't know what's going on, (laughs) but you kind of get the gist of it. Yeah. So that was explaining their whole creation story. The the people of this game, they're known as the Matoran or the Tahonga, again, so the difference between those two names in a bit. Mm -hmm. They came to this mystical island, this tropical island, with their god, Matanui, who they named the island after, and they lived happily in peace for a while. Mm -hmm. That was until Matanui's brother, the Makuta, came down and spread his darkness over the land and cast a spell over their god and put him to sleep. But they didn't lose faith. The people told the legend that six mighty heroes known as the Toa would one day come to defeat the Makuta and revive their god. Mm -hmm. And that's what this game is about. Yeah. So why don't we go over here to this other intriguing bit of story. Ooh, yes. Um, I I described this during Xenoblade, but Xenoblade was basically Bionicle for adults. So this is like Xenoblade for kids. Yeah. And that it's so mysterious and that like, so many plot twists, and every plot twist opens up like 10 billion new questions. Yeah. So right here, this is really cool. You can see carvings on the base of this telescope. And you see these constellations here? Mm-hmm. We're going to what these are in a bit, but notice that there's different icons under each one. Yeah. I just love how this is all like foreshadowing to events in the game, too. I know. This is so cool. Especially now that you've played and you like understand what these are all referring to. Yeah, this is so cool, because I've only seen this game one other time, so this is exciting. <laughs> And showing you what's going to happen. Yeah. And then even this, this is re- referring to events oh. after this game. Oh my god. So you notice all these constellations here with a bright red star in it. Yeah. What you could do was look through the telescope here and see the stars in the sky. Mm-hmm. And you might notice these are numbers right here in the lower left and upper right corners. Mm. If you found the constellations and aligned just at the red stars in the center of the constellation, the whole constellation on screen the numbers there would actually read the date that that chapter of the game would get released. That's so cool. This game released episodically in chapters. The first chapter was in January 2001, and the last chapter was in December 2001. So throughout the whole year, it had new chapters come out about once a month. Yeah. Um, and since it debuted in January 2001, and the first sets came out in August 2001, that means Bionicle technically debuted as a video game, which means we can have Tahu and Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> That's the most important thing. But regardless, I do think it's so cool how like you could see when the next chapter was coming, and then compare it to here to see what you were going to get next. Yeah. So, this is the first chapter, just the beach. We've actually seen the entire first chapter. Mm, this is short. No, it is. We're actually going to do the second chapter in this episode, too, which would be this here, the fire. Mm-hmm. And then the water would be next after that. Yeah. So, um, that is why I told you to ignore uh, Maku on the beach here. She <laughs> appears there. when chapter three was unlocked. Yeah. Unfortunately, because this game was now complete, all the chapters are available at once, which means you can sequence break and do the story out of order. Mm-hmm. So, just pretend she's not here. She's not supposed to show up on the beach until after you've kind of <laughs> gone through the first two chapters. Additionally, chapter one was originally blocked off here mm-hmm. by a river of lava. Oh. And then when chapter two was released, the river of lava cooled and allowed you to progress further. Oh, cool. And we might know something over there. <gasps> I see you.
and then the lava cools. Mm. So, like, that's what happened when they released the second chapter? Yep. Oh, that's so cool. Which goes to the Fire Village. Although, we're actually not going to go directly to the Fire Village. We're going to take a detour through the uh, Bruin Forest here. Oh, yes. <laughs> because this game's sense of atmosphere is just... I really feel like this rivals Nintendo games with their sense of atmosphere. I know. I wouldn't say it's quite Team Ico level, but it's so good. Yeah. So as far I as the kind of a maze, you're supposed to like click on these to see where you've been. So for instance, oh. we're putting the white X there because we're going down this path. Oh, I remember this. This was so cool. I love this place. Oh, this is really cool. This is <laughs> this is a really kind of almost like creepy area. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, yeah, it looks like a fire burned it down or something. It did. So that's going back to the beach there. So we don't yeah. want to go back to the beach. We're actually looking for something in here. Oh, I forgot hmm. to check. This is who we're looking for. This is our oh. first character we're meeting. Oh my gosh. Yes. I love this character. Would you like to read his voice? Yeah, how should I read him? I don't know, however you want. You know, you know his personality. All right. Now you do him. Okay. <laughs> I am Kapura. Are you the Makuta? <laughs> Just this guy in the woods pacing back and forth. <laughs> and he says he's practicing. I am practicing. So let's ask him, uh, what are you doing? He goes, I'm practicing. Vakama says that even though I am slow, I may be faster than all the others and travel very far. He says I must practice. Jala says I'm being silly. I practice often. Um, Kapuro is supposed to be kind of a weirdo. <laughs> like, other people consider him to be kind of weird. Yeah. But there is kind of a wisdom to his words, too. So where am I? You are where you are. If I practice, I can be where I am not. I think I can feel it. It is hot where I am, and where I am not, it is cold. And I think I can feel it. I must practice more. The island has many places to visit. I want to see all of them, but the others do not like to travel. Matanui is very big. I believe it's approximately the size of Pennsylvania. Oh, it's a really? pretty big island. Yeah. Vakama says that in the beginning of time, Matanui fell from the sky and landed here. The Makuta came after him and made him fall asleep and sent his monsters out across the world to control it and destroy its beautiful things and to make the Tahonga his slaves. So Tahonga are the different people. He's a Tahonga. Mm -hmm. Tahonga later got renamed to Matoran because Tahonga was actually a word from Maori, uh, the Easter Island culture. Yeah. And they actually sued Lego and a whole bunch of Maori words had to get changed. So most of them, they just spelled differently. Tahonga, they completely right conned down, just said it was Matoran. So this game uses Tahonga because it was from before that time period. Yeah. I'm probably going to keep accidentally calling them Matoran. That's but... fine. <laughs> That's fine. Um, also, something I do need to note, uh, these characters, despite how they appear, are actually not robots. Mm -hmm. They are closer to cyborgs, except instead of like circuitry inside, it's more like gears and pistons powered by organic heart and lungs and stuff. Yeah. So like these characters eat, they sleep, they breathe, they bleed. Um... They're closer to cyborgs than machines, which is, yeah. I think, very important to understand, like, why they need to hunt, for instance, and stuff. Yeah. Vakama has told us to wait for more creatures to fall from the sky who will save us. I think one of them landed on the beach. I saw it fall when I was practicing before. And that's mm. referring to the canister we saw on the beach. Mm-hmm. Vakama knows more. You should ask him. He lives in Takoro. But before we go, I think we need to ask what the Makuta is. Yeah. If you do not know what the Makuta is, then I guess you are not it. This is actually probably my favorite thing he says here. Yeah. That is good. Jala says I have to be careful of the Makuta while I'm in the forest. He says the Makuta is everywhere. He means Rahi, monsters, things you can see. But I know the Makuta is here now in these burnt trees and in the dead soil. All of these things were destroyed by the Makuta, but the Makuta never left them. That is how he becomes strong. That is what the Makuta does. He destroys things. I think the forest looks very beautiful this way too. And when it burned, you could see all the fires perform the great Takara all the way to the sea, and it was very beautiful. Uh, Takara is just a kind of dance, so he's, uh -huh. he's comparing, like, the forest burning to almost being, like, a beautiful dance in its own way, even despite the destruction. Yeah. Hence the hidden wisdom I talked about in this character. Oh, I love him. All right, goodbye. We'll be seeing plenty more Kapura. He's an important character. Yeah, he's all right. so great. Uh, oop, nope, I don't need to talk to you again. <laughs> we like you, Kapura, but... <laughs> Not this Goodbye. Much. <laughs> I think we should head over to the village you talked about. Yeah. Uh, Takoro. So we'll go there for That's the first village. Oh, uh -huh. welcome back. <laughs> Maze. Yes. You can just kind of click around randomly to get out sometimes. I think that's what I did. I probably should just mark these trees. <laughs> yeah. See where we've been before. Already been In there. there. But like any of these also could go back to the start, you know? Yeah. There's two exits. You can go to the exit by the beach and you can also go to the exit that leads right to the village. Either one would do. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> I feel like we're getting closer. We have to be. We gotta be where we're not, like Kapura. Yeah. We gotta walk very slow like he does. <laughs> oh, I've, I've actually never been this lost before. This is kind of ridiculous. Oh no. <laughs> this usually doesn't take this long. Oh, there we go. Oh, and this is the exit to the village. Hi, Kapura. Oh, he's following us. Yeah, so if we turn around, there's the forest right there to the left. Uh -huh. And if we turn around, 
that's back to the beach. So okay. Oh, cool. Just so we got our spatial awareness down. Yeah. So shall we enter the fire village? Yeah. This is chapter two. The guards. Jala says we got to keep a sharp lookout for eye. I think they say random things every time you click on them. Oh, it's really? kind of like different lore bits. <laughs> yeah, the bridge the is down. down. We use the wind room. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so I was telling you this. So there's a bridge here, which is down right now, say, yeah. to the village, mm-hmm. which is fine. It's a very imperialistic village here. Yeah. Let's go in here. It. Meet the uh, captain of the guard himself. This is Jala. Jala. Overlooking his uh, kind of little statue of the whole island. Mm-hmm. Hard at work. We have lost communications with Gakora, but I have no Tahanga to spare for a reconnaissance unit. Gakora is another village we got to shortly. Yeah. There are never enough good warriors to send against the Rahi. You look stout, traveler. You should consider a career in the guard. He's trying to recruit you already. Look at him. <laughs> Jala's an incredibly important character of the series. He yeah. comes back up through the end of it. Mm-hmm. Him and his girlfriend, who, uh, sadly, she's not in this game. Yeah, that's The thought a shame. herself. <laughs> so who are you? Is, I am Jala, captain of the guard. It is my job to protect, to protect the city against the Rahi. Uh, Rahi is just a catch-all term for the animals of their world. Yeah. Most of them are by default just animals. Like, you know, some are friendly, some are hostile. However, the Makuta's dark influence has caused most of them to become hostile, mm-hmm. which is something this game addresses a lot later. Yeah. I knew they, they were getting stronger, but no one in the city believed me until the beasts overran the Tren Chrome Redoubt. I have no idea what a redoubt is. <laughs> Tren Chrome, I think, is a river, so. I lost a lot of good warriors that day. Then Tahu arrived, and now we all now we know why the Rahi are on the move. Bakama says he'll save us, but I don't see the point in putting all our hope in him. You can never have too much security. Tahu's the first of the Toa that we're going to see. Or actually, right. we already saw him. Oh, we yeah. saw him on the way here. Saw a little glimpse of him. So let's ask about what Takoro is. Takoro is the city in the Great Lake of Fire. It lives in the shadow of the Mangai, the Great Volcano. This fortress guards the bridge to it. Many Tahanga live there. Surely you've heard of it. <laughs> No, no, we have amnesia. We don't know anything. <laughs> I love his idol animation. Yeah, he's like tapping his foot. <laughs> Most of the people in Takaro farm the lava fields to the north beneath the Mangai. Many are surfers riding the rapid, riding, yeah, riding the lava rapids for sports like Doki Doki again. I had to like, trip over my words to read. <laughs> Our people are the most courageous warriors in all of Manui, and we're not afraid to challenge the Makuta's beasts if we must. But we cannot confront the enemy alone. I do not have faith in the other cities of Manui. If they do not mm. join us with their in their defense, we will all perish, Toa or not. Oh, Jala's a Debbie Downer. I know. It's all <laughs> pessimistic here. So let's ask what Rahi are. The Rahi serve the Makuta. They are hard beasts, worth, ruthless and fierce. Some can fly, others can walk along the ground, and some, I've heard, even tunnel beneath it. We have battled many of them. In recent times, they've become bolder and forced us back to here. Takoro used to reach all the way to the coast. The charred jungle used to be a green, peaceful place. But in the fury of our battles, it was burnt. And that's where we met Kapura a few minutes yeah. ago. But we are the Takoro Tahanga, and we will not surrender. And now Tahu, the great fire spirit, has come to lead us against them. They can attack at any time, although always when it's least expected. That is why you must always be on guard. I have studied them extensively. It is possible that they were once normal creatures, like the others that inhabit Manui, until the Makuta turned them. Mm-hmm. Although, I'm not certain of this. Stuff like this have been kind of retcon. Like, they mm-hmm. were in later continuity always aware of this. Final continuity is so goddamn loose because, like, 30 <laughs> different people writing the continuity. <laughs> just get to just play this game in isolation. Yeah. If it is true, there may be another way to fight them. Until then, we must patrol our stockades and our trenches day and night and keep the guard fires burning. All right, thank you and goodbye. May Tahu protect you, Traveler. Bye, Jala. So we should probably establish each of the six villages in each of the Toa have an elemental theme to them. Takaro and being the village of fire and Tahu being the Toa of fire. Yeah. Additionally, you may notice each character wears a mask over their face. Mm-hmm. Um, the masks grant Toa and the village elders the Chiraga special abilities. It does not grant people like Jala abilities, though. His mask doesn't do anything for him because it's just a powerless mask he wears. Yeah. It's not like a cultural thing. Like, they don't show their expressions. Yeah. And anyway, let's uh, open the bridge, shall we? <laughs> That being said, I feel like there's a lot of expression in this game. <laughs> yes. One thing that always bothered me in the movies was the characters' face, like, the masks on their faces contorted. Yeah. Like an actual face does. And I feel like that was unnecessary, because these characters emote a lot without their faces contorting. Yeah, uh, you just look at their eyes. I know, there's so much there. Oh, I'm actually going to pick up something here. Are they dancing back there? Hey, here's the law of a surfboard you asked me to hang on to. That's actually a reference to a GBA game that was a prequel to this game, and oh. kind of a Legend of Zelda ripoff, which wasn't as bad as I was expecting when I played it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, back there was actually, I think, chapter five or six. We're um. going there way later. That's supposed to be sealed off right now. Mm, okay. And they start talking about different stuff, like the farming and everything, you know? Yeah. They're all dancing back there. I love it. <laughs> Let's go in here and visit uh, the comma. There he is. 
So, you have found your way back after all. You are brave. I do not know what brought you to the city, but you should take care. There are some who remember you. The temper of the Takoro Tahanga boils as swiftly as the great Mongai in whose shadow we live. <laughs> Makama is quite old. <laughs> One of my favorite characters, though. Yeah, he's great. But in this, our first hour of hope, you may find the villagers' patience to be greater than usual. Yes, there is hope in Takoro. Tahu is here. It was Jala who found him. He was caught. He caught him in a trap intended for Arahi. It was... <laughs> Sorry. You can just use a more normal voice if you want. <laughs> It was almost at the end of my brave captain and his famous guard. So we got a little cool cutscene here. Jala's out uh, hunting in the Ooh, the woods back. with some other people. It's just a flashback to a few, like a few hours ago. Mm. Jala was here hunting with a few others in the woods. And his eyes changed color. Were his eyes yellow before? Yeah, they were. <laughs> oh well. But yeah, no, they, they're so expressive that me needing to move their faces. Yeah. He's kind of Piscus Capura and a few other guys are dicking around. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Shh. Shut up. <laughs> See, he sprung their trap. <gasps> oh, he's pissed. Oh, shit. He's like, how dare you trap me? I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're so sad. <laughs> There's so much personality in these animations. I know, I love it. Also, I love this, too. Capura is so goddamn slow. <laughs> Hurry up, Kapura. <laughs> He's kind of overweight, I imagine. Badass. <laughs> then Vakama stops them. Because mm. Vakama knows who this is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's bowing to him. When the Toa arrived, they had no memories except for what their names were. Yeah. They didn't even know about their powers. They had to slowly discover them. Mm hmm. The people are related, but I know that their courage will be tested now more than ever. Tahu's arrival marks the first step in a great struggle, and I have much to do. I'm sorry for having so little time for you. As you know, there is a lot to do. Is there anything more you would ask of me? Alright, let's ask how we know him. How do you know me? This is hardly the time for jokes. Have you forgotten all of your great deeds, and also the thing that you- that drove you away from us? <laughs> Thanks for the answer. You explained so much. <laughs> Thanks for explain who Tahu is. He will save us. He has come from the heavens, as foretold in the ancient legends of our city, to battle the Makuto with his sword of fire and release us from tyranny. He is a great hero and will struggle against the Rahi of the Makuta and will face great dangers. That was one long run on sentence, Fukama. <laughs> The legends prophecy six heroes descend from the heavens to Madanui, and one of them, Tahu, is the fiercest, but his passage to Madanui has left him uncertain. He has needed help to understand his long-awaited quest. I have told Tahu all I know of the legends of Madanui and of the masks of power. You can collect them all. Twelve different shapes and six colors each. <laughs> <laughs> in little loot boxes, in little loot boxes too, uh, specifically Lego created by Uncle to combat Pokemon. In terms of, like, market share? <laughs> I have done all I can. Now it is up to him to adventure into the wilderness and find a way to defeat the Makuta. One day I'll get a full set of masks. You will. One day. They cost, like, $5 each, though, and there's literally 72 for just the first wave, and there's, like, another <laughs> wave after that. You're getting there. I have all the misprints now. Yeah, which is the hardest part. I, I, I have all the misprints except for the goddamn pearl gold kraken. I even have a five-hole <laughs> kraken and the pearl gold Viserac shell, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. I am Vakama. I am the Turaga of this village. Turaga are the uh, village elders, so there's one who leads each village. And mm -hmm. much like Toa, they can use mass, and they have limited amounts of elemental powers. Like, I imagine Vakama can't, like, quite control fire like a firebender like Tahu can, but he can, kind of, like, ignite his fist, you know, stuff that's, like that. That's cool. I am the legend keeper, the Takara leader, he of the great fire staff who farms the Mongai's burning core. Have your aimless wanderings caused you to forget everything? He's such an old man, he has like such a badass title. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Surely you still have the board that I gave you. We just got it back, actually. For that was a special gift. Lava surfing is a difficult skill, and no Tahonga other than those that dwell in Takoro have knowledge of it. It would be a pity if you have forgotten it entirely. <laughs> About that. 
<laughs> uh. Amnesia's a bitch. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for your time and goodbye. Forgive me. I have much work to do. I am preparing for the arrival of another. I am not certain, but the stars have revealed a new prophecy, which I do not yet fully understand. And this is literally referring to story events after this game. They actually foreshadow shit that wasn't revealed until like eight years after this game. In this game. That's so crazy. It's it's so much like Xenoblade in that sense. Get out of here now. I'm <laughs> tending to my fire. He's like, I must <laughs> stand here and wave my arms up and down really fast. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we can do in this village for now. So uh, why don't we... Oh, wait. Actually... Jala's doing something. That's not Jala. That's uh, that's a Jala's clone. Oh, that's Jala's brother. It's Jala's brother, uh, La Ja. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not much we can do here, and that's because that was the end of chapter two. Mm. We're supposed to head back to the beach, and that's where chapter three begins. All right. Um, do you want a little foreshadowing to it for the next episode? Yes. Get to talk to this babe. Help! Help me! My village has been attacked! Will you help me? And uh, next episode. <laughs> <laughs> wait, sorry. Well, sorry, I can't help you now. We gotta wait till the next episode. You asshole. <laughs>